Uh, hello, this is a uh, video, a film about uh, the finite element method. And uh, to do this, I'm going to use a very, very simple example that we actually know the answers to, but uh, we want to learn the uh, basics of how uh, the finite, le finite element um, method works for structural problems. And for this, I'm going to use a spring element, which is just a, a spring, a 1D spring. So I'm going to have an element that uh, uh, is represented by a spring, like so. And uh, we will have uh, our nodes at each end. This is node 1 and this is node 2. Um, and the displacements there, this will be x1. Uh, and it uh, starts where the node starts and goes to the right. And then also x2, same thing. So um, the uh, coordinate system here and the directions are important. Now, uh, those are the nodal displacements. And we also have nodal forces. So on node 1, we're going to have F1. I probably should put a 1 here with a circle around it. That's how I like to uh, designate uh, nodes. So 2 here. And then we'll have a force also in the uh, rightward direction, uh, F2. Uh, and then our spring element uh, has a constitutive law. Uh, it has a spring stiffness, K. So that's about as simple as it can get. Uh, and uh, what I'd like to say is uh, let's look at what happens when you uh, deflect uh, the nodes. Uh, if, so if x1 is greater than x2, uh, what that would mean is that the spring is getting shorter and uh, we would actually have uh, forces that look like this. So x1 is moving towards x2, and so we'll, we'll be in compression. I can put that up here too. This is compression. And what that would mean is that we would have a, a f1 uh, directed to the right, but f2 would be directed to the left. We still have k here, and here's our x1, and here's our x2. And uh, actually, the force depends upon uh, not just the absolute uh, deflection of the nodes. It depends upon the difference between the two. So if we look at this, we can see that this is going to be, uh, F1 was going to be uh, a, a K, sorry, times X1 minus X2. This is a positive number because we said X1 is greater than X2. Uh, now, x2, or f2, sorry, is k, and it's negative. So, uh, this is going to be uh, x2 minus x1, which will be a negative number. And you can see that f2 is pointed to the left. Now, if we have the case where, uh, let's see, I'm getting this straight here x2 is greater than x1, then uh, this would be the case where we have the spring in tension. And uh, what it would look like, here's our spring element. Uh, x2 has moved, like I said, this is x1. x2 has moved away from x1, so it's further apart uh, from x1 than it was at the beginning. And that means that we're going to have forces that are directed this way. So F2 will be positive and F1 will be negative. If we go back and look at our uh, uh, equations that we had before uh, for the uh, compression case, the case of compression, if x2 is greater than x1, then what's going to happen is that this value right here will be negative. It means that f1 is going to the left. Uh, this value will be positive if x2 is greater than x1. And so that means that f2 will be going to the right. 
So uh, these two expressions here for relating our, uh, our nodal displacements uh, with our forces through the stiffnesses are valid for both the compressive case and the tensile case. That's very convenient. So what we can do is we can put these, uh, this equation or these equations, it's two, two equations, into matrix form. And to do that, or if we do that, we will wind up with F1 here and F2 here. And then we will have, if we look at each equation uh, uh, and put our vector of nodal displacements out here to the right, then um, in the first equation, we're going to have a K right here because that multiplies X1, and we're going to have negative K here. Um, and then in the second equation, we have a positive K times X2, so we'll have a positive K here, but X1 has a negative K, so we'll have a negative K right here. So uh, this is our, um, uh, our element um, stiffness equation, uh, and this uh, with the forces over here on the left and the nodal displacements on the right, nodal forces on the left, nodal displacements on the right, and then this vector right here is uh, our uh, low element stiffness matrix. Okay, and this is how we always start with finite element method, uh, is we define an element and we define the uh, stiffness relationship for that particular element in uh, its own coordinate system. Okay? Let me see what I want to do next. Uh, actually, what I'd like to do is I'm, I'm looking at some notes over here that I have made before. Um, what I'd like to do is uh, maybe do an example. So, uh, yes worked out an example before. So let's see how this all works out. Um, so, uh, in my opinion, the way you should always start is you should start with very simple examples and then work your way up from there. So, uh, what I'd like to do is actually uh, uh, put some numbers in here. Uh, so let's let K equal to uh, 100 or 1,000, sorry, newtons per meter. And then we're going to let um, uh, x1 equal 0 0.2 meters and x2 equal 0 0.1 meters. So this is the case where x1 is greater than x2 and therefore we're going to have tension. Or not tension, compression in our spring. But let's put this all together and see how it looks uh, in the context of uh, uh, finite element uh, formulation. So we saw that our uh, uh, local stiffness matrix has positive uh, elements on the diagonal and then the same elements on the, uh, uh, or the, the, the negative uh, Ks on the uh, off diagonals or not on the diagonals. And then over here on the right, uh, we know our displacement, so we have 0 0.2 and 0 0.1 as our nodal displacement. So uh, we, if the problem is specified this way, Oh, sorry about this. I haven't I've been writing with... Uh, let me go over this real quick. Uh, I have K equal to 1,000 newtons per meter. Uh, X1 is uh, uh, 0 0.2 meters. X2 is 0 0.1 meters. And therefore, since X1 is greater than X2, uh, since um, X1 is greater than X2, we have the case of compression. And then when we put this into our matrix formulation... Uh, we have um, uh, the problem specified this way, and what's unknown here are the forces that we will have on the uh, spring. 
Uh, so what we should see when we work this out, uh, as I said, this is compression. So we're going to have F1 here, like so. We have our spring. And then F2 uh, on the other end, like so. And so we should see this. We should see that F2 is negative and F1 positive. This is 1,000 right here. And we have moved this node 0 0.5. Uh, two to the right, we move this node. Um, oh, sorry. Zero point one to the right meters, meters, and this is newtons per meter. Okay, I'm going to work this out. But what I'm going to do first is I'm going to stop and then start it over again, uh, so that. Um, uh, we don't have videos that last much longer than 10 or 12 minutes.